So, so, the, so these are three layers, uh, three different types of activities, but I put them, I clustered them into the same, into the same topic, uh, create a collaborative venture, which requires an understanding of what you do and how you do it, that's the value system, uh, and putting in place a structure, so that's the modeling aspect, and then being able to exist in the real world as an organization, right? So there's th three different layers that are interconnected somehow. Um, so again, this is, this is a huge thing. Right? This is probably like two sessions of, uh, of the course because there is a technical part, which is the introduction to REA, that we have to dive deeper into it and understand how to, uh, how to use this language. This is a slide that um, helps understand the one before. It's not another topic, it's just an add-on, meaning when you design these things, you have to put yourself in a different framework. So when we talk about the collaborative economy and collaborative entrepreneurship, we're moving away from the scarcity model into what we call the abundance model. Okay. So examples of abundance in the model is, if we take other fruit, for example, is ideas. You have a community of 10,000 members and they're early adapters, they're playing with the technology and they're proposing new ideas, new features to your products. Okay, ideas, they're not scarce anymore. You're not relying on a small R&D department 10 brains to generate new innovation. You are relying on a huge pool of individuals that supply ideas. Your job in the abundance model is not to try to find the idea and refine the idea, it is try to filter the best ones that present an opportunity to you, a near future opportunity for you to seize that idea among a bunch of other ideas that are coming towards you. Right, so, so in a scarcity model, it's like you're, you, you're trying to predict and, and choose a path of development and you stick on that path before you prove yourself that it's good or bad. In the case of Adafruit with their community of innovation, the difference is that there's a bunch of ideas that are thrown at you and because they're coming from your consumers, okay, or prosumers, they are validated somehow through that social interaction. And your job now is to pick the one that would have the, the most impact on your business. You see, so it's a filtering job rather than, you know, a hard work to find the gem yourself, right? Or to, to make, to create the gem yourself. Okay, you have to pick the gem among other things that are thrown at you, right? So it's a, it's, it's a filtering rather than development. Uh, but also another example of abundance is when you talk when you think about financial resources okay so in the scarcity model you know if you need fifty thousand dollars to develop a new feature or a new line of products or a hundred thousand dollars you have to uh, go look for the funding and 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 access to that funding uh, is hard so there's a scarcity right but what if you uh, crowd fund your thing. In the crowdfunding uh, scheme, you're not connected to a limited number of funders. You're connected to, you're connecting to the whole population. And even if you have the same number of startups, uh, they're not catering to the same people because different ideas might interest different people. So all of a sudden you find yourself in a situation where you have a huge broadband of funding, right? Um, so it's, it's, it's a model that goes, crowdfunding is a model that goes towards abundance. Okay. So when you, when you think about creating a, a collaborative venture, um, putting yourself in the abundance, abundance frame of mind helps you design that. Okay, so this is a sort of a prerequisite when you're thinking about these things to say, um, train your brain to think and do the design and the modeling in the abundance model, you see. 
Um, okay, so, th so this is another topic here, positioning, mission, and vision. I don't have a, much content of sub or some sub points here. I think um, that's, uh, I was thinking about this for, for a few days, but I couldn't come up with something. But it, essentially, these, these two networks overlapping here is to say that when you think about collaborative ventures, the positioning, the mission, and the vision need to cater to two main category of people. One is the contributors, and the other one is the market side. Okay. And, and your venture is the intersection of both. When you're positioning yourself, I'm going to build the cheapest sensor. Uh, or I'm going to build the most precise sensor. Um, or I'm going to build um, the smallest one-board computer, like Raspberry Pi or something like that. Um, you're sending signals to those who want to participate in your venture, and you're sending signals to those who would like to buy that thing. So, and mission is the same thing. You know, have, projecting a mission... Um, in one message, you have to think that you're catering to both categories of people. Um, for example, here you might think that your mission has to have some ethical, social, environmental values incorporated into it in order to strike a chord in the people that might want to collaborate with you, be part of your venture, but also in the people that might buy your product. You see? Um, and envision the same the same thing, so so I think that the the whole point here is when you're sitting down and thinking about these structuring elements because these are structuring elements, okay, you have to think about these two poles. How do I use these structuring elements to send the good signals for the contributors and also for consumers and buyers, and and you have the concept of prosumers these these people that are that are both that are playing both roles. And they're, and they're, but at the same time, they're also structuring elements of your organization. It doesn't matter what it is. It is a community, a network, uh, a co-op, a not-for-profit. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, mission, vision, and positioning allows people to align their behavior uh, and their activities, right? Because... Uh, and creates culture around and creates cohesion and so on and so forth. So it has a structuring element uh, um, uh, um, function inside and also it has, um, it plays an, an, as an attractor for, for, for the input side, for the side of collaboration, collaborators, um, and, has an, an, and has an appeal for, for the market. Okay, so crafting these, these things, you know, you have, to, you have to think about your organization being open on both sides now. You see what I'm saying? Okay, from the input, the innovation community that you might you might build, or any other community, and the and the output. So I think you can you can get through this in in maybe one session, with with a few exercises. You know. Anything to add? I mean, you're you're big in in sustainable collaborative entrepreneurship. So that sustainable part could be, you see, could be plugged into the positioning, the mission, and the vision. If you want to add that layer, mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? If you want to add that. The, yeah, there is a bunch of stuff, but I don't have it on the top of my head now. But I feel uh, there's a bunch of stuff that could be added here. Bruce? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 like. Uh, like, I think we should really, really strip it down and then expand on it. Uh, like, uh, like, uh, like, what we do is, is lower the barriers uh, for any entrepreneur to, to, uh, um, to follow his passion. So another course is, uh, how do we create a value proposition? 
um, and a path to contributors, prosumers, consumers, and users. Okay, so in traditional terms, this is value proposition and path to market. Okay, so here too you see that in this particular course for collaborative entrepreneurship, the organization must be open on both sides. So we're talking about contributors, we're talking about consumer and users, and in the middle you have these prosumers. Right, so the contributors are, could be part of your core organization, and then you can have different layers of involvement. Um, if you're open on that, on that input side, so you can have consumers, and then on, on the output side, you have the consumers and users. Um, so I cut this into four, four, um, four points. Uh, one is a general theory, uh, which goes essentially to say what I said. You know, so now you're building an, uh, now you're building an organization that is more open, right, on both sides. So put yourself in that frame of mind, and and, and what if we consider um, abundance instead of scarcity? What is going to so? How, how do you how do you create your value proposition? How do you how do you craft your value proposition from that? Um, so here we come to what you said: analysis and segmentation of contributors, interests, prosumer, user, consumer needs and desires, and an analysis of the demand. Okay, if we go back to Ada Fruit, the it's it's more of a pull than a push because. <laughs> community of consumers of other fruit which are consumers and innovators at the same time contributors um, they propose ideas and then if an idea bubbles up because there is a lot of involvement with this idea from the other people in your community it demonstrates that there is a demand and the company just follows you see so your consumers are pulling you in one direction and your consumers are actually pulling you in many directions. And you have to choose, you have to prioritize, you have to choose the one that gives you the most advantage today, you know, based on your strategies. Um, and, and, and here, put in place an incentive system. So if we talk about value proposition, we have to talk about an incentive system. Like, why would you contribute to my venture? Why would you buy my product? Okay, so what are the incentives that you contribute or that you buy? You see what I'm saying? So, the, so it's always this opening in, in, in both sides. And, and another important topic that I wanna introduce in this particular session is a discussion between collaboration and competition. You see? And here you can say there is competition within organizations how can we move towards a more collaborative uh, culture so people are not fighting each other to propose ideas be and, and, and get a career? That's not the type of dynamic that we see in collaborative ventures. But also on the outside, if there are groups of people or other small companies or open source communities or other types of communities that are in the same market, occupy the same niche, and they could be seen as competitors, how can we flip the way we look at the world and come up with a value proposition for them to join forces? With the whole collaborative economy, it's, it's about building synergy among, among different groups, right? And, and joining together instead of fighting each other while everybody maintains its own core competency, okay? So, you know, the discussion between collaboration and competition is, are you going to try to rebuild all the capacities somebody in your market has that you see as a competitor? And if he has a better A and B, you have to beat him at that A and B and, and make something even better? or if he has a key competency that you don't have, sh sh you know, do you have to build it and, and try to beat him on the, on the market? Or you, can, or you can come up with a value proposition to merge forces to collaborate, respect each other's strengths and 
and you know, together try to address the market. You see. So I think that's a that's a mental flip um, that normally happens in our ranks of the collaborative economy, but it's kind of hard to, hard to get for people that are the hero entrepreneur type and they want to be the best and, 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 and get on top of everything, you know? Um, and a lot of people, they waste their resources just doing that and, and they waste their resources. I mean, you know, pick your words, pick your bottle, right? Um, you can exhaust your company trying to catch up uh, and be better than anybody else in your environment rather than, um, you know, trying to merge forces and respect each other's core competencies. Um, so that, that's a discussion to have and, and a sort of a, a way of seeing the world for the collaborative entrepreneur. I think it's, it's a, the, the, the course has to be able to instill a certain, a, a new vi view of the world. You see, uh, to see, to see their actions within a niche through collaborative lenses and, and, and stop seeing enemies everywhere and competitors everywhere. And when you take courses on entrepreneurship, there is a, a big portion of, uh, you know, the, the, the course that is analyze your competition. And everyone that sells something close to what you sell or, or addresses your, your target customers or audience is immediately listed as a competitor. And then, you know, you have to analyze your strengths and weaknesses compared to them and, and try to find a place, squeeze yourself somewhere in between where you can, you know, optimize your forces so that you can coexist somehow within these competitors, you see, instead of cutting alliances with them, you see, somehow. So you, you could have an entity in your niche that goes head to head with you and proposing exactly the same product or service, but does it mean that you have to treat them as a competitor or you can actually, you know, have a value proposition for them to collaborate? So I think that would be a, that, that would be a topic to, uh, to, to drill down. And the incentive system here is, uh, when you talk about the incentive system, <coughs> um, <coughs> You know, it's it goes beyond the the the, the just the the um, traditional setting of of a traditional organization. Meaning, even if you have a hybrid organization like a startup, and you're going on Kickstarter to crowdfund something, okay. Um, these people that crowdfund you are part of your contributors somehow. And a crowdfunding campaign has a built-in incentive system. Why would you give me $10? Okay. Um, so that's, that's, that's one way to see, you know, to, to cut and see the, the incentive system around your, your venture. Um, but also, if you go back to Adafruit, what is the incentive of these people in the community of prosumers propose new ideas or to take a risk and try a new product uh, that is buggy, you know, and, and find bugs and, and, and help you fix them. You know, what is their incentive, right? Um, so, so there's different ways you can think of incentives. Uh, here we illustrate with, with how Sensorica does it, you know. Um, what if we record people's contributions and then reward them in a better way, more fair way, but you don't have to go there. You know what I'm saying? Because, because now we're talking to entrepreneurs that are willing to build, um, how do you say, um, hybrid organizations. But you have to open up to the incentive system more than, well, I'm going to give you some social benefits and, and health insurance and I'm going to give you a salary. You know what I'm saying? So, 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 so go way beyond that uh, as, as a collaborative entrepreneur. And then there's another session on, on outreach. Um, normally in, in traditional courses of entrepreneurship, you see marketing, 
and advertising. Um, we use a lot the term outreach. Um, and the subtopics are theory. Again, what is outreach and why we don't just talk about marketing and advertising. Uh, network, community, network versus community, identity and culture. Um, branding, communication strategy, channels and tools, onboarding and accommodation. So if you have an open enterprise, the idea here is that, you know, first of all, who are you? What's your organization in terms of identity and culture? How do you, how do you project, uh, what is your branding? What do you stand for? And, and then, you know, all the logistics of communication and communication strategy and, and tools. And then when it comes to the collabor collaboration side or the input side, people that want to contribute to your venture, how do you um, receive them, <coughs> welcome them, and help them jump on board and accommodate within your culture and within your processes. Okay. Um, so this, this number five and, and six is saying that just the outreach is not enough. It has to be followed with other processes and, and, and you have to, you know, the first thing are pretty classical, identity, culture, branding, communication strategy channel is pretty classical. I think five and six are what we, we, uh, accommodation is like sustaining the engagement. Yes, sustaining the engagement. Yes, actually, actually, yeah, actually, uh, you're right. Actually, uh, we could change that. Oops. We could change that saying enga engagement, right? That's what you said. But accommodation is also it's like it's a bit different than engagement because, <coughs> like accommodation, I see it as uh, helping people, uh, kind of like facilitating engagement is kind of like letting them. Like it's both are facilitating, but one is kind of a forced facilitation, and the other is uh, encouraged facilitation. Yeah, there's a lot of facilitation and coordination here, right? Mm -hmm. I show you around, right. I take you by your hand, yeah, and, uh, and show you how things uh, yeah, how things get uh, how how things are getting uh, done here, right? Mm 